from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. Hi, this is Micah Halpern sitting in for Tisha Bader. And here is the JBS News Update for Monday, July 26th, 2021. Israel is well represented at the summer 2021 Olympic Games in Tokyo. For many people, Israel's participation in the Games is a source of pride. Israelis are represented not only by their own flag, they are also represented in other countries. Ronan Ginsberg is the coach of the Czech national men's basketball team. He is also a proud Israeli. Before the Sunday matchup between the Czech Republic and Iran, Ginsberg shook hands with his Iranian counterpart, coach Mehran Shanhitab, at the Tokyo Olympics. And this is a quote from Ginsberg. I shook his hand before the game started, and at the end, we also talked a bit about basketball, Ginsburg said. Obviously, it's special that an Israeli coach is leading a team against Iran. Perhaps this is also a message to the leaders in Iran, he added. The Czech Republic held off a late rally to beat Iran 84-78. to The Islamic Republic of Iran and Israel do not have diplomatic relations, even informal ones. They are at war. Athletes from several Muslim-majority countries in the Middle East and North Africa have sometimes boycotted their Israeli counterparts during the international competitions. Algerian judoka Fedi Nourin and his coach withdrew from the Tokyo Olympics to avoid facing an Israeli athlete. They were both suspended by the International Judo Federation. International athletic committees are cracking down on this behavior. It is in violation of the rules and the spirit of international competition. On Saturday, Avishag Semberg won Israel's first medal at the Tokyo Olympic Games, taking bronze in women's Taekwondo 49 kilo and defeating Turkey's Ruki Yildirim. This represented the country's first medal in the Tokyo Olympics. It also was the first medal in a sport other than judo, windsurfing, and kayaking. Semberg's medal was the 10th Olympic medal Israel has won in Olympic Games overall. Now to Ben and Jerry's and their decision to no longer sell ice cream to Israeli settlements in the West Bank. There has been significant blowback against their decision. The Ben and Jerry's decision has triggered many states that have passed laws designed to prevent boycotts, especially boycotts against Israel. To consider the action they should take, states like Florida, Texas, New York, New Jersey, and Illinois are deciding whether their laws require them to divest from Ben & Jerry's parent company, Unilever. There are 34 states in total that require their governments to stop doing business with companies that boycott Israel. 21 of those states explicitly include West Bank settlement boycotts in their definitions. This is greater than a single ice cream company. 75% of the states of the United States will have to remove any investments they have, especially pension plans, with Unilever. States have billions of dollars all combined, and a significant percentage of that money is now in question. And now a sad moment. On Saturday, Jackie Mason, the beloved U.S. comedian and actor, died. Mason was 93. The stand-up comedian with the heavy Brooklyn Jewish intonation was ordained as a rabbi before turning to show business in the 1950s. He was well known for his social commentary, talk show appearances, and one-man shows on Broadway. Mason won numerous awards in his career, including a Tony Award and an Emmy for voicing the father of Krusty the Clown on the TV show, The Simpsons. Born Yaakov Maza in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, on the 9th of June, 1928, Mason and his family moved to New York when he was five. His father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and great-great-grandfather had all been rabbis. After college, he was ordained and began leading congregations in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. On a personal note, I was a guest of Jackie Mason's on his show several times, his radio show. He always made me laugh, and it was hard to keep a straight face in his presence. I will miss him. And here's a look now at our programming for tonight 
on JBS for Monday, July 26th. At 7 o'clock, it's the wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, international spokesperson for the Jewish community of Hebron, Ishai Fleischer, discusses the future of the Jewish presence in Judea and Samaria, as well as the future of the two-state solution, a program of the Miriam Institute with Benjamin Anthony. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with the CEO of the Yesha Council, Yigal Dilmoni. And at 10, it's a look at the films of Mel Brooks. Coming up next, Tisha Bader speaks with William Daraf, CEO of the Conference of Presidents, who will discuss the ice cream giant's discriminatory decision to stop selling in what it calls the occupied Palestinian territory. This is Micah Halpern and the JBS News Update. I want to wish everyone a good evening.